Hello, I am Mike Schmidt. I'm the pastor at St. Luke's Lutheran Church here in Manhattan, Kansas. And this is our Lenten midweek number four worship service. The date is March 18th, 2020. The theme that we are using for the midweek series this Lent is Living Among the Bible's Trees. And today's topic is Jesse's Tree. As we gather, the trees of the Bible help us realize why we need a Savior, how God provided a Savior for us in the person of Jesus Christ, and how the saved lives of repentant believers look. Today, we consider Jesse's tree, that is, his family tree. His son David kept faith with God, but succeeding generations wandered away, and God let other nations' armies defeat them until only a veritable stump remained. But by the grace of God, from that stump, a branch would come, our Lord Jesus, fulfilling all the ancient promises. From him springs new eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. He is like a tree planted by streams of water. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. Let us confess our sins to God our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we confess that we are bound to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have eaten forbidden fruit in our thoughts, words, and deeds. We have not produced spiritual fruit in keeping with the new life you have won for us. For the sake of Jesus' sacrifice on the tree of the cross, grant us your forgiveness. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Amen. After his triumph over Satan's temptation in the wilderness, Jesus went to the synagogue in Nazareth and announced that the prophecy of Isaiah was being fulfilled in him. The prophet had written, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to grant to those who mourn in Zion a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls, so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see, have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted, and for the son whom you made strong for yourself. They have burned it with fire. They have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your face. But let your hand be on the man of your right hand, the son of man whom you have made strong for yourself. Then we shall not turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 6. In a vision, Isaiah sees the heavenly throne and hears the promise about the remaining stump of the royal family tree. 
In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go, and say to this people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull, and their ears heavy, and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn, and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is a desolate waste, and the Lord removes people far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land, and though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak, whose stump remains when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Isaiah chapters 10 and 11. The branch on whom will rest the Holy Spirit shall usher in a peaceable kingdom. Behold, the Lord God of hosts will lop the boughs with terrifying power. The great in height will be hewn down and the lofty will be brought low. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with an axe, and Lebanon will fall by the majestic one. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. And the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal for the peoples. Of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. In that day the Lord will extend his hand yet a second time to recover the remnant that remains of his people from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, 
from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the coastlands of the sea. He will raise a signal for the nations and will assemble the banished of Israel and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The jealousy of Ephraim shall depart and those who harass Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not be jealous of Judah and Judah shall not harass Ephraim but they shall swoop down on the shoulder of the Philistines in the west and together they shall plunder the people of the east. They shall put out their hand against Edom and Moab and the Ammonites shall obey them and the Lord will utterly destroy the tongue of the sea of Egypt and will wave his hand over the river with his scorching breath and strike it into seven channels and he will lead people across in sandals and there will be a highway from Assyria for the remnant that remains of his people as there was for Israel when they came up from the land of Egypt. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. In that day the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Our sermon theme is Jesse's tree following the larger theme of living among the Bible's trees. Isaiah 11.1 1 says, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And notice the tree theme going on in that verse. In Isaiah 6, God calls Isaiah to proclaim judgment against Judah and Jerusalem. It's in the midst of Judah at the hands of the Assyrians. He says that the, their land would be burned like the terebinth or an oak whose stump remains when it is felled. But all is not lost, he says, for the holy seed is in its stump. That whole concept of a tree burning to the ground, but then later on a stump, or I should say a shoot coming out of the stump, is seen in Job chapter 14. For there is hope for a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its shoots will not cease, though its root grow old in the earth and its stump die in the soil. Yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put out branches like a young plant. The imagery there is pretty powerful, that what would appear to be a dead stump after burning to the ground, lo and behold, that there is life found in. in Isaiah 10 and 11. That's our second reading. Isaiah proclaims judgment against the Assyrians. And he also tells us that there is a hope in a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Lord had judged Judah for its idolatry. Israel had rebelled against the Lord uh, like children. Isaiah 1.4 says, Ah, sinful nation, a uh, people laden with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, children who deal corruptly. They have forsaken the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They are utterly estranged. That whole concept of children that we have put time and energy into and then they go astray, the Lord is saying that's how he feels with Israel. And folks, it's not just Israel, it's our nature too. We are no different in thought, word, and deed than Israel. Just a quick review of the Ten Commandments. The first commandment talking about worshiping only God and no others. We don't 
just fear, love, and trust in God, but we fear other things as well, and we love and trust other things too. I think of what's going on with the coronavirus, and are people more fear fearful of that than the living God? The second commandment, using God's name appropriately, not cursing with it, but rather calling on it in prayer. I really hope that our people today, especially with what's going on, are calling on the name of the Lord. The third commandment, not despising the word of God, but allowing the word of God to shape our thoughts and our words. The fourth commandment, meaning that we would respect those in authority, whether they be our parents, those in government, or any type of leader, a teacher, our boss, do we speak against them? The fifth commandment, that we would um, be concerned about our neighbor's physical well-being. The sixth commandment, that we would reserve the activity, uh, the gift of sexuality within the bonds of marriage. The seventh commandment, not stealing, and, and that would include copyright laws, doing everything that we can to protect other people's property. The eighth commandment, dealing with people's reputation and speaking well of them, putting the best construction on everything. The ninth and tenth commandment deal with coveting, and do we have a longing for other people's desires, relationships, possessions? All of those things, the Ten Commandments, show that we have failed. We have not lived up to God's desires. And then the last point on that, that note here, we deserve temporal and eternal punishment. When Jesus was born, the royal line of David seemed dead. Both Mary and Joseph were descendants of King David, but they didn't look like royalty. Isaiah 53, 2 says, for he grew up before him, that meaning Jesus grew up before God, like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. There was nothing um, different about Jesus. He certainly didn't look like royalty. But Jesus was and is greater than Solomon. In fact, he's greater than any king that ever lived. The triune God at Jesus' baptism anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, the book of Acts tells us. We understand this to mean that he received the sevenfold gift of the Spirit as described for us in Isaiah 11:2. Jesus was and is the promised Savior. Acts 13 Verses 22 and 23 read, God raised up David to be their king, of whom he testified and said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. Of this man's offspring, God has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus, as he promised. Jesus suffered and died in our place on the cross, but he didn't stay dead. Revelation 5, 5 says, Weep no, no more. Behold, the root of David has conquered. In Isaiah 6, Isaiah was aware he was lost. He was a man of unclean lips who lived among a people of unclean lips. He says, Woe is me! But a seraphim touched his lips with a burning coal taken from the altar, and with that he took away his guilt and atoned for his sin. That word tone means to cover, and he was then covered by the blood of the sacrifice so that he was not seen as guilty in God's eyes. It's a picture of what God does for us in holy absolution, holy baptism, holy communion. I put the words holy in here to define those as God's work among us, what he is doing in, to, and for us. He is giving us his forgiveness, won by Christ on Calvary, through the words, I forgive you, through holy baptism. And then in communion, we receive the Lord's body and blood on our lips, taken into ourself. We are then covered by the blood of the Lamb, our guilt is taken away, and our sin is atoned for. 
He is the vine, John 15, 5 says. And since we are connected to him, we bear much fruit. Just a couple verses later, we find out in John 15. Because we are connected to Christ, we are changed people, and we think and react differently. We are new creatures in him. St. Paul writes in Romans 15, 12, and again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles. In him will the Gentiles hope. The root of Jesse is Jesus, and he is the one who saves us, and our hope is found in him alone. Not only will we hope in him, we will be his instruments in bringing others to trust in him. During this time of the coronavirus, I want you to be thinking about who in your circle of friends and family might be filled with fear. Think about how you might reach out to them to give them words of confidence and hope and always relating it back to the fact that you have a hope found in the Lord as well. The tree of Jesse or Jesse's tree is a window in the cathedral in France and um, it's a huge window as you can see in this picture but I want to focus on just the bottom portion of it. And I blew up that bottom portion. It's actually on the bottom, Jesse, and coming from his loins is the tree. And that tree then expands all the way to Jesus. He is the one that is promised by the Lord. From a dead stump came our hope. From our spiritually dead lives comes new life in Christ. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Let us pray for the church here and around the world and for people everywhere in their various needs. For everyone weighed down by their bondage to sin and an inability to stop sinning by thought, word, and deed, let us pray to the Lord. For the sake of Christ's sacrifice on the tree of the cross, Heavenly Father, open their ears to hear the gospel anew. Free them to live before you in your kingdom. For everyone who has fallen prey to society's distorted morality, let us pray to the Lord. For the sake of Christ's sacrifice on the tree of the cross, Heavenly Father, surround them with faithful and caring members of the body of Christ. Call them back in repentance and hope. For those who keep the peace at home or are deployed abroad, for those who provide care and guidance in relationships, finances, and health, and for those who respond to natural disasters and crises of various sorts, let us pray to the Lord. For the sake of Christ's sacrifice on the tree of the cross, Heavenly Father, accompany them with your Holy Spirit. Protect them from harm and give them wisdom in all circumstances. For ourselves and the church around the world, as we seek to produce true spiritual fruit, let us pray to the Lord. For the sake of Christ's sacrifice on the tree of the cross, Heavenly Father, assure us that we are your pleasant planting. Forgive our errors and send us to serve in faithfulness and love. These and any other things you would have us ask, Heavenly Father, grant to us for the sake of the sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. 
O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, who created you, forgave all your sins, and strengthens you for service in his kingdom, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace as you serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to encourage you to remember the church financially at this time. We um, are not having our offering plate passed in the church for the next two weeks. So um, please be sure to remember us and, and um, possibly send in your offerings. Thank you. <laughs>